What's going on guys? So I am still out here at the Alliance factory. Just, I, I've filmed so much content out here on, on the process of building an Alliance RV and what they put into it. And it is super cool. And with me today, it's kind of exciting. I got Joe Martin. So Joe, do you want to introduce yourself and what you do out here at Alliance? Yeah. So uh, my name is Joseph Martin. Uh, work for Alliance RV, of course. I'm the quality manager here. Um, and we are getting ready here to go on a test drive, a performance test drive. So has our units. any other YouTuber come out here and done this with you yet? Not yet, you're the first. That's awesome. I wanna be the only one that's ever done this with you because <laughs> this is cool, this is exclusive stuff because this is kind of what, I hate to say it this way, but it's a huge differentiator, but it's something that's so different that other manufacturers should be doing. Yes. And they don't do it. Right. But you guys do, and what's the purpose of this drive? So this drive has been super, super valuable to us. Um, in the beginning, uh, you know, as a brand new RV company, it, it allowed us to go out and put the coast through real world situations. Um, so if we had a, a door that would fall off or, you know, things happen inside the coach, we want to know about it. We want to know about it before it leaves here. And that's what this test drive does for us. Yep, It doesn't guarantee that it's going to arrive at a dealership with no problems, but it sure does lessen the chance that there's going to be problems, right? It, it does that as well as it also gives us very valuable information to get to our production teams of issues that we may see during a drive so they can make those changes online so that we don't see those when they arrive at a dealership. That's awesome. Well, I know what everyone's going to ask me when I pan around and show this Ram next to us <laughs> is it's got a little bit of damage in some areas. You got some dents yes. here. It looks like the uh, side rails uh, <laughs> met and kissed the front of a fifth wheel at some point. Yes. You have some stories you could tell me because so, this looks fun. I'm not going to dive into all the details, um, but uh, yes, that's exactly what happened. Uh, a, a fifth wheel was unhitched and we drove away without the jack legs down and that's the end result. You know, it happens. So. <laughs> how, many, how many fifth wheels so. have you towed? Oh my gosh. Um, Hundreds, if not thousands, at this point. It's that's so, an, that's insane. And stuff yeah. happens, and a lot of times it's it's a sense of complacency at times, right? We're just so busy, so yep. much stuff going on, things can get forgotten. But I can almost guarantee, after that happened, it didn't happen a second it time. It did not happen a second time. Um, I developed checklists. Uh, we have all that now, so that this does not happen again. That's awesome. But it's so. it's good to know we're we're all humans. We're yep. all people. We all do things like that, and it's it's good to see. I mean. Quite frankly, a lot of people believe that when you make a mistake, you shouldn't share it. But I think sharing it and explaining it helps others not make that mistake. Sure, so absolutely. Really, really good deal. Anyways, let's hop in this truck. Let's do what we need to do. Or is there any pre-steps we do before you do your drive? Uh, not for the drive itself. Uh, when we go to hook up to a unit, that's when we start all of our checking and all that. So. Okay, let's head over that way. All right. Guys, hang tight. I'll be right back. Yeah, when you first started it up, I'm like, that doesn't sound like a diesel. So. <laughs> and do you tow all of your units with this truck? Um, yes, we do. Okay. So right there's our unit. We're hooking up to a big boy today, Valor. Yes, sir. All right, so this process isn't going to be too unlike the process most RV owners are going to go through when it comes to uh, hitching up to a fifth wheel. So nothing... Nothing surprisingly new should take place right here. Disconnect on so I can run the jacks. You gotta love the speed difference between the uh, level up versus the ground control, yes. the electric versus hydraulic. So what I want to see is, have you gotten it down to an art to where you know exactly when to stop this? Um, you know, I can get it pretty close, so we'll see. It's right about there, should be pretty close. So we'll see see how it goes. Um, at this point, I'm actually gonna back into the unit and uh, see where we're at. Sounds good. So. Yeah, that that's, that's done through experience right there. <laughs> I've done it a time or two. Yeah, who needs auto leveling or auto return when you got those skills? the fifth wheel climb. Yep, just make sure that my lock is in place, put my pin in there. Okay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is retract my front jacks. I'm gonna quickly jump in and do a tug test real quick and then we'll retract. Looks like he's good. All right. 
retracting the front landing gear. Let's see how this weight impacts this truck. So this is a 3500, this is a one ton, which is gonna have a lot of payload capacity because there's no diesel engine in it. Yep. You mind if I look at the door sticker? Please. 4,400 is what he thinks. Let's see here. 4,431 pounds worth of payload capacity. It's got some payload capacity, but I'm gonna tell you, this thing still adds a lot of weight to it. It squats it for sure. Yeah. Yep. Very cool. Okay. So I like to, before I start all my process around the outside, I like to make sure this door is locked, now that the jacks are up. Just so it's not flapping in the wind while we're driving. Makes sense. Got to put a plate on the RV. Yep, we'll put a plate on there. Um, I like to walk through and just make sure all of our doors are latched. So, um, we are missing a furnace cover right now, so that's a shortage okay. item. Uh, just looking in here, making sure nothing's bent, broke, or otherwise for the drive. Giving a good look, making sure the doors, making sure the slide outs are completely closed and sealed. So, I will pop this off just because I don't want that going down the road. Yep, flapping around. Flapping around. So, we do ship these in our pass throughs. There's probably a hundred thousand of those sitting on the highways exactly. all across America. Yep, exactly. So we ship them in there so that uh, they don't fly off during transport. Makes sense. <clears throat> so just taking a good look around, just a visual walk. Okay. So while we're back here, I'll strap on the license plate. I basically make two loops around. I get all my lights going on the second lap around. Man, so you do this all day long, don't you? Yes, sir. So here's a here's a weird question while you're walking around, and if you need to interrupt me, feel free. But when you've done this walk around, what's the worst thing you've encountered? Um, really, on a on a pre-drive walk around, the worst thing would maybe be you know some some loose skirting or maybe a slide out gapping, things like that. Mm -hmm. We have to do a slide adjustment before I drive. Okay. Things like that. We generally don't have stuff just falling off. So um, what I'm doing here is this back door is not fully shut. So I'm gonna actually, I have to open that so it doesn't create a, yep. an air cushion inside. And I go to shut this all the way. So now we're good and shut solid. Nice. Is that something uh, you figure most folks with toy haulers need to do but don't do? I would I would guess that most need to do that and don't do that. Yes. Okay. Um, there's a there's a fine line. It's a multi-stage clasp at the top, uh -huh. and you can get in the first stage and not the second, and not realize it until water and stuff starts leaking inside the rear of your camper. Wow. So, so you got to make sure you have compression you on that bulb seal. There you go. Because so. yeah, you you slammed it, but then you find out that it needs to be slammed. Right. Yep. So, again, I'm just checking all our doors, everything, making sure that everything's good and shut. Everything's in the travel position. So, again, just making sure that there's nothing hanging, dangling, yep. anything like that. So, so, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up all of our power and everything in here. I do my walk around so I end up here, so I know that this is my next step. You got a process and that's always good to develop a process that you stick to every time is critical when it comes to towing an RV. If you don't have a process and you're just trying to remember each step independently, you're going to find that you'll forget things. That is absolutely correct. So I'm going to go hit my lights and my flashers. I'll have to hit the brakes here in a minute. So here's a weird question. So for me, I usually just put my emergency flashers on with the parking lights on because it's the equivalent of actuating yeah. your brake lights. Well, it is, except you don't know if the left and right turn signals are hooked up correctly. Okay, that so makes sense. If you're right backwards or whatnot, yeah. Left might be right, so I like to make sure that, so I'm just walking around making sure all the lights visually work uh, as far as running lights are concerned, and then we'll go in and start doing our, our turn signal test. Okay. 
What I'll generally do um, when I'm by myself, I will pull the unit around to a white garage door or a uh, white side of a building and hit my brake lights for to the see that the, that the brake lights are coming well, on. I'm going to act as your building for you. That will work perfect. I'll, I'll do the front side with you back there. And, uh, Sounds good. All right, so I get to help out today, which is awesome. All right. Okay, brake lights. We're good. All right. So that is it for the the walk around the unit. Um, now we're getting ready to sign off on our sheet and go for a test drive. Sounds good. So we got so. the pre-inspection. Is that what you might say? Pre-trip? We'll, we'll say it a pre-trip inspection. Yep. Okay. You bet. So should we hop in and go for a test drive? Let's do it. Okay, so we're about to take off and hit the road. So can you kind of explain where we're going, what we're doing, and how this how this typically works. Yeah, so this drive generally, what it's for is we wanna take some curves, we wanna hit some almost highway speeds if we can, things of that nature. Um, before we leave, before we set out, out of the complex, I will actually uh, mess with the brake controller here to make sure that I have brakes before I leave the complex. Um, do a brake check in that way, and then I can also adjust the gain accordingly. Sounds good. Uh, while we're driving. And we can uh, talk about how we do that. Everyone wants to know how you adjust gain properly, and as many times as you show it, it's always good to reiterate it. So yeah. that's good. So, um, but yeah, so when, once we get out of here, we'll uh, drive, we'll go over some railroad tracks, we'll go through some a parking lot that's got some twists and turns in it, trying to get the stuff inside to sway a little bit. And uh, I know later we'll talk about our PDI process. Yep. Um, this unit is pre-PDI. So after it goes through this process, it goes into PDI and that's when we see what damage or, or lack of damage was done. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we go from there. That sounds so. good. Let's hit the road. Straight away, we'll do a brake check. So now that I'm on the straightaway, there was nobody behind me. So I squeeze that and you can feel the brake start to apply. Yep. And I can actually turn up the gain a little bit because I feel I feel very little, yeah. very little drag. So there we're getting more drag. That's all the trailer slowing us down, nothing to do with the truck. So I'm actually gonna go up to a seven here. Seven, that's usually where yeah. I set mine, seven, yep. seven and a half. But so now I'm getting I'm getting pretty good drag there. So great. That's where I'll leave it. And you're only supposed to go about five, 10 miles an hour and to initiate yep. the brake. And you wanna know that the trailer is capable of slowing down the truck. I'm not, it's hard to define exactly how much, it's kind of a feeling. And for me, I wanna know that my trailer brakes are grabbing, but not at the verge of locking up. That's kind of the best way for me. That's a great description. So what's interesting to me in this little drive as well is the fact that you said you have the 6.4 liter diesel in, or 6.4 liter gas engine in here. And uh, I'm interested in seeing how this thing accelerates at full guns <laughs> with this thing behind it. Because what's the GVWR in this thing? About 18,000, probably roughly 18, 17,000 yeah, pounds. Um, yeah, it's it's a heavy one. Yeah. And uh, this truck does not accelerate extremely fast. Yeah. <laughs> I bet so. you're wishing for a diesel next go around. Yes, you bet. So that that's been discussed. So we'll we'll see what uh, what we get to. So, but you know this we got this truck very shortly after we started, and I was the one that chased down the purchase of this truck. So this has this has got a soft spot in my heart. Oh yeah, there so, you go. Um, but yeah, it's been with us for a while, and as you can see, we've given it some love on the yeah, on the bed, yeah. and <laughs> so it's got character. It's got character for sure. Yep. So we're accelerating. Was that full throttle? No, no, no. I may be at quarter throttle. Probably same speed, but just louder, right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, and obviously I have it in tow haul mode, so it's got a different, yep. you know, the gear change is different. So. All right. So we got the railroad tracks to go over. Yep. And we don't go easy. We just go normal speed. Just let it do what it's going to do. So we got to do exactly what a customer would do and drive this thing off the side of the road into a ditch <laughs> and then pull it back up. 
We are not gonna do that. Yeah. And say I have never <laughs> off-roaded with this before. <laughs> oh. Got a nice bump here too. Yep. And we do, we actually, I wouldn't say we aim for bumps. We don't try and hit humongous potholes and things like that, but manhole cover, stuff like that. Yeah. We, we want it to try and shake things loose. We want, before it leaves the factory, we want to know that everything's high and tight. Well, and, and I think a lot of it's just the peace of mind to know that an RV, when it leaves your factory and it takes off towards a dealership, that you didn't miss something that's now going to be an obstacle for someone on the road. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you are hitting all the potholes, by the way. You got it. And the manhole covers. <laughs> oh. oh, but this is a, this is a good thing. And, and, you know, I guess the downside to if every manufacturer did this is right now like this intersection would probably have like 10 rvs at it yes <laughs> yeah all the roads would be full of rvs that are being taken out on test drives absolutely yep now we this has been such a valuable part of our process that i, I just can't stress it enough now i gotta ask <laughs> only because people will be kind of upset if i don't ask have you ever had a component catastrophically fail during one of these tests like i have a wheel never, come off or never 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 because I'm not even nope. that necess that wouldn't necessarily be a negative tick on yeah. Alliance because that could just be a component that you bought from a manufacturer that right. failed. So, but that's good to hear that, that you've never had that happen. Yeah, and our, our quality program, um, I'd put it against anybody's. Um, we so wheels, for example, we have three to four lug nut checks online and another one in the PDI bay. Oh, wow. So it's a very very stringent test. Um, every nook and cranny of these things get looked over multiple times so you know accidents do happen but we are um, yeah our, our quality program is very superior that's awesome and we try not to drive it like a nascar racer you know when we're this is somebody's unit we're not trying to destroy it but we are trying to shake out anything that that on a normal drive <laughs> yeah. would, would uh you know an issue. Oh, so, good. so we're actually in the RV Hall of Fame area here and this is a great road so it's nice and windy. Uh, it's got a great parking lot up here that we can swerve around and make some tighter turns to uh, try and get things that just going on a straight road don't get the swerve. So yeah. Again, we're just checking also the tracking. I'm checking my mirrors all the time to make sure it's not dog-legging or anything like that. Make sure it's tracking straight. And I keep checking the tires, just make sure everything looks good on the wheels, nothing's wobbling, things like that. This is a good day too to test drive when it's a little bit windier out. Mm -hmm. it really gives you a good feel of how the unit's doing back there because the wind really pushes these things around. Got a question for you, Joe. Yes. So you've been towing for how many years? Uh, three. Three years. Yep. And in that period of time, you've towed, like you said, upwards of possibly into the thousands yeah, of RVs. Right. Yeah, so you've been towing a lot. Would you say that you've become an experienced RV tower, a trailer tower? I, I would think so. Um, yeah. There's definitely better, but there's probably worse well, out there. If, so. if you build experience through experience, then you, you've probably done pretty good. So my question yeah. for you, and I'll preface this question with, with how I answer it first. Uh, you know, some people say, do certain situations still make you nervous when you tow? Oh, absolutely. And as much as I've towed, the answer is absolutely. Yep. There are things that can happen that are weather related, that are uh, traffic related, that just are just, you're not sure what's happening. So yep. you automatically get that nervous feeling. You get that, I don't want to say white knuckle feeling, but you get that that anxious feeling of is something going to happen or is something going to go wrong. And and the reason why I'm saying this is, is for as many trailers as you've towed and for as much as I've towed and other people who watch the channel, people who are just getting into RVing, I think sometimes feel like they're amateurs at it if they don't feel 100% confident 100% of the time. Yep. So, and I guess my advice would be, it's important to know you always have something back there because you can actually get complacent. When you're on a long highway stretch, you forget it's back there once yep. in a while. Um, so every once in a while, it's a good thing if, if something bounces or something like that, it's a good reminder that you still are hauling a humongous uh, thing behind you. And, uh, 
but yeah, um, definitely situations, you know, tight, tight city streets are really something that has always bothered me a little bit. It's that strange feeling and it's okay to feel that way as long as you're just trying to be as safe as possible. I think that's what it comes down to. I agree hundred percent. All right, so we're going to go ahead and return back to home base get this thing wrapped up and then uh, this unit will actually move into your PDI facility. You said tomorrow? Tomorrow. Yep. Tomorrow. So there's second one in the door tomorrow. Yep. Okay. So as a test drive and then it goes to PDI and they get to go through that process. But we're actually going to visit the PDI facility next and we'll, we'll look at some units that have already gone through the test drive and now they're in there to see what exactly shook down during the shakedown drive. Great. Well, Joe, I really appreciate it. And I think, are you going to give me the tour through the PDI yes. facility as well? Yep. Okay, so now's a great time to uh, subscribe to the channel because you're going to get to see what takes place in these things, or at least the result of this type of a drive and, and the impact it has on a new unit that's just essentially come off the assembly floor line. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again real soon.